Hey everybody, welcome to episode 19 of The Commit. I'm Neil. And I'm Richard. So, Richard, today we're gonna talk a little bit about internal hackathons, right? Awesome, yeah. Company hackathons that are internal to the company, and I would hold these, Neil, as like being distinct from the ones where you're gonna get external people taking part. We've just had one at DevPost, which is a lot of fun, and I think we wanted to share some tips with you guys on like how to get these hackathons right. As a lot of people running companies yeah. wanna throw one, it's hard. So Richard, tell us, what should you expect to learn and get out of a company hackathon when you're setting it up and you're planning it? Totally, what I think the key thing is to remember what not to expect, right? And the okay. thing not to expect is don't expect to like develop mission critical IP, right? Like if you're trying to approach the hackathon in a place where like we've really got a mess of our core IP, our core product, it's probably not the right thing to do. I think a much better idea is to experiment around the edges of the core business and experiment on the edges of the product. That's where you're gonna find a lot of big wins. Right, it's a hackathon, it's not like a two week sprint. Yeah, exactly, it's a hackathon. It should be about having fun, learning, validating interesting ideas. I think that that's like a better way to approach it. Cool, and so what are the most important things that you should think about while you're planning that hackathon, once you have that sort of goal established? Yeah, totally. So I think the number one thing I would say is how open can you be? And I think you should always optimize for maximum openness. So at our hackathon, we actually shared all of the projects publicly. Everyone could see what it is we built on. And I really think that you should push yourself and a company to be as open as possible and, and share with your community, share with your users, share with your customers. Like these are the things that we're building. This is what we're experimenting with. We want your feedback. Yeah, we actually invited people to participate from outside the community. We included public voting. We yep. wanted to make sure people saw these projects and had an opportunity to sort of participate if they wanted to. Totally. I think the other thing to really focus on is don't let people work during the hackathon. And this is a really key point, right? But the business has to keep going, right? Well, the business, if your business dies because you spend 12 hours away from it, it probably wasn't that good in the first place. So I definitely think like, if you're in hackathon mode, be in hackathon mode. Right, like when we're at hackathons on the weekend, we don't spend our time like also proper into the grocery store, right? No. So, ha if you're taking part in the company hackathon, people that are taking part, like that's what they're doing. That's what everyone's doing that day. Everything else is canceled. So, I think that's really key. Yeah, we had sales, we had marketing, we had everyone participate, and mm -hmm. it creates a better environment. People aren't feeling like left out. They don't feel like, oh, if only I had time, because you take the company time and say, hey, we're all working on this today. This is important to us. It's just as important as our core business to experiment and sort of think about totally. these, uh, I guess you call them edge cases. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's like the third tip is much like we were saying at the start, which is focus on learning and experimentation. You know, if you kind of keep that as your goal, like, hey, at this hackathon, I've always wanted to play around with this part of our product or play around with this flow and see if this would be helpful to our users, like take that lens. So. Try and be open, no one does any real work, and then focus on learning and experimentation. Well, they're gonna do real work, they're just not company work. Yeah, they're just not gonna do their day-to-day -day work, because then that's not a hackathon, that's right. just working a lot of hours. So, uh, is this a distinctly different process, running an internal sort of company hackathon from an external hackathon? Like, if you were doing yeah. this for your company and you were gonna invite 100 people? Totally, yeah, really different process. And actually, we're gonna have a commit episode where we've got someone coming on who's thrown a really awesome company hackathon. So I think we'll like dive into that one then, but cool. for today, let's talk about internal. Okay, so let's say you've had a hackathon, you planned it well, you got people to come, yeah. and you've created some great projects. Um, are all projects necessarily gonna make it into production? Well, I think it's the same as any hackathon. Not all projects live on, not all projects need to live on. Some of them were just about trying something out, learning something new. I think a better goal is, say you wanna build something that's actually part of the company, part of the product, maybe an extension, then I think the goal should be to see your idea getting to production rather than your project. Right, so I'm you're trying to prioritize for, say maybe your code isn't the greatest, you built it in 24 hours, totally. probably doesn't have a lot of tests against it, but maybe that idea can then be prioritized. And there's some of the best ideas actually need that initial really beta alpha prototype version to show off what the idea is so that other colleagues can explain, can think about it, can iterate on it. And I think that that's a really great outcome is then like when that idea germinates and becomes part of the product process, as it has at DevPost mm -hmm. in the past. Uh, GitHub import was first started at Hackathon. Wasn't that version that made it into the product, but it kicked off the conversation that got into the product. Yeah. 
Um, and do you think that then there's a problem? I mean, like, do you think this prevents people's feelings from getting hurt from saying, oh, I came up with this great project, we implemented this, but not mine? No, I think that everyone needs to be upfront about this at the start of a hackathon, right? Like, it's a hackathon. Some of these ideas might make it into production, but this is an opportunity for us to be free of all the constraints of the process of the product and just have fun building. Cool. Awesome. So we had a hackathon. Why don't we tell people about some of the things that were built at that hackathon? Yeah, let's definitely do it. I teamed up with Robin and we built DevPost full screen presentation mode. Our idea being that you could make a better way for people to show off who their team is and people to find them during hackathon expos by simply reusing some of that dev post product information. Who's on the team, what's it called, what are some of the images. So we stripped out all the stuff on the page, all the description, everything else, and just Comments, made it. everything. Yeah, totally, and just made a super, like, really nice to look at page. Check it out, if you're interested in using it, drop us a comment and we'll talk to product about getting that rained. Cool. I failed at hacking at our but hackathon. But Neil, you promised the viewers you were gonna <laughs> hack last week. I did. and. I did hack, I just didn't submit it. I wasn't proud of what I made. But uh, Ross, our CTO, is really proud of what he made, which was the beginnings of an official API for mm. DevPost. So um, he actually created his first endpoint was a portfolio endpoint that returns all your data, your name, all the information about you, all your projects in JSON. Um, so api.devpost.com is hopefully soon going to be live and we'll, That's awesome. we'll have something to show you. So if you've got ideas yeah. for future endpoints, other ways we could present the data, any of that, Go on the dev post page and tell Ross what you're interested in. People have been waiting that for a long time. A really long time. But in addition to us hacking, last weekend was actually one of the biggest weekends of the hackathon season and some stunning projects, I think right? there's like 20 hackathons going on. Amazing. Maybe more. We'll show you our staff picks. This week I picked Three Degrees, which was from Hack Harvard. What's really cool about this app is that it uses a, it's a mobile app for using um, infrared photography to analyze and actually create a 3D um, model of a burn wound. So let's say wow. you are, you've arrived at the hospital, you're in the burn ward, the wound's cooled off a little bit, um, so it's, it's a, there's a big temperature differential. You can take a picture, turn it into 3D topography, and actually figure out you know, what types of fluids, how much, what type of treatment to use. Amazing, to how work on smart this. are these people? Yeah, it's awesome. I really want to see these guys pick up a grant or something and keep working on this because it sounds like a really great use of uh, sort of a commodity IR camera device. That's amazing. Well, my project is Recall 3D and it combines two of my favorite loves, travel and 3D printers. <laughs> So what this project does is enables you to upload pictures that you've taken, it strips out the coordinates, gets the topography, and then 3D prints a model with a QR code on the bottom so you can go back and look at the original pictures. I just think this is awesome. Imagine using this Neil, after like an awesome hike or a great bike ride, so much cool stuff. Totally encourage you to check it out. It's a great project. I think that this whole hack could like immediately go from like small idea to like full scale, like, you know. Dude, this is a business. Yeah, it is. It's totally Monetize a business. Monetize this bad boy. <laughs> all right, that's and all. And we'll invest. <laughs> yeah, uh, Neil will invest. <laughs> that's all we got time for on the commit this week. Happy hacking. Happy hacking.